Hey guys, this is Michael Bunch Marine looking at the Camus 26HB with a Mercury 300 horsepower V8 four stroke. Looking around the boat, you can see it has the two tone hull side upgrade. It has a custom tandem axle trailer, which is a very, very heavy duty trailer. Probably more so than what most people need, but at least you can get from here to Florida without any kind of issues. You can see the side of the boat, stainless steel rub rail, you can see the spare tire, you can see the nice little step to get up into the front of the boat, which we'll be entering here in just a second. Trailer brakes, obviously. Has the bow strap, bow safety strap. Just looking down the side of the boat, beautiful boat, it's a huge boat drive guides you have talking about the hull design this is a revolutionary design that you can see the basically the cutouts and what that does is that cavitates the water underneath the boat letting the boat ride on air it's one of the best driest rides that you'll ever see on a or you'll ever experience on a center console bay boat you can see get down underneath the back of the boat you can see almost a version of a tunnel hole you can also see the underwater lights that are on the back of it here trim tabs Linco trim tabs it has the stainless prop Bob's hydraulic jack plate here you can see very neat clean organized area at the back Hydraulic steering, which is also power assist steering, which is one step up from just standard hydraulic. Now I'm gonna step up into the boat. Make it a little bumpy for just a second. So we'll start at the bow of the boat. Coming up front, you can see how wide it is. This is a great fishing boat as well as a good family boat. Lots of cup holders. Everyone needs cup holders. All the bottom cushions are removable, as well as the lean posts there and one on the opposite side. So you can remove those so that you can have that fishing day or you can have them put in for the family day. And we'll start up front. So coming up front, you can see how wide it is how big it is up front. You have anchor locker with friction hinges on the lids so it'll stay exactly where it's supposed to. It has a place for a trolling motor plug here that you can put in. Stainless steel compression latches on all the lids. Stepping down, opening up this compartment which is a, just a very large storage compartment. You can see how deep it is. Stainless steel rod shocks, or gas shocks. You can see all the detail as far as bolts cut off evenly. That's how large the storage compartment is. You can see the holes down in the bottom to store the uh, leaning post when you don't want the upholstery in. You can see the seal, you can see the drain tubes here. Over to the side. Unlock it here. So you can actually leave these unlocked. They do have catches on them so that you don't actually have to lock it. Put it in. Stainless steel striker plates for the latches. Once again, gas, stainless steel gas shocks for all you saltwater guys out there. You can use this as an ice box, rod storage, etc. Seat down. Nothing under this cushion. This cushion raises up, and there is your a very large ice box. Drain plug in the bottom, stainless steel striker plates. Once again, the catch 
so that you don't have to actually latch the boxes unless you want to lock them. Same storage on this other side as what's on the previous side. Storage in the floor. Also has a place for a bucket with a drain. Friction hinges so it doesn't slam down on your head whenever you're doing it. A cooler slash ice box here. Stainless steel latches, friction hinges once again. We'll step up. So you can see two tone tower or T top. See all the room, both sides of the console here and here. Interior lights. Coming down the side, you have your rod holders here with cutouts so that you can actually use those rod holders with the T-top. You can see the stereo does have four JL Audio speakers that face down so that you can hear those on that rough day. Spreader lights at the bow. Also has them on the stern. So we'll walk down this side. So once again, rod holders, more speakers. Pole holder there. Up through here, you can see the other speaker there. Coming right around. Another speaker. Rod holder. Coming up underneath the console. Very large area. Big enough for a porta potty. Porta potty is removable. You can see access hatches here. This access hatch is for the three trolling motor batteries. Also has its own dedicated charger for those three trolling motor batteries. Coming back this way, the bottom hatch is for your cranking batteries. You have one engine and one house battery. Also dedicated charger for those. One up from that, you have access to wiring harness, gauges, that sort of stuff. I'll come back to the battery switches in just a second. And then access to the get back of the gauges here as well. Easy access, makes it easy to rig, very clean. So back to the battery switches. These are motorized battery switches. So when you hit the power switch at the console, those switches automatically turn on. And then whenever you hit the power switch again, those automatically turn off. Also has an emergency parallel switch that uh, if you do have one battery, it'll automatically, or you can manually, parallel the battery so that you can jump start it and start from there. Also has this digital gauge readout right here that gives your voltage on each battery so that you can check those whenever you want to. And then you can also, kind of nifty, also completely remove the knobs for security. It's kind of a nice feature. Very large area there. I'm 6'1 and I can fit down in there with plenty of headroom. Working on the console, you have a Vessel View 7, which is the Mercury screen. Works very similar to the Lowrance HDS series. Gives you all your engine data. Also links to the stereo and so your gauges, stereo, you can control everything from just this one single screen. Or you can manually do your stereo, so on and so forth. So you have top dome lights, you have spreader lights, rear spreader lights, front spreader lights, and then a blank accessory switch. Stainless steel steering wheel with the fancy knob. Tilt hydraulic steering, once again that is power assist steering. You have your jack plate gauge as well as the switch to trim it up and down. Controls for your Linco trim tabs here. And then coming over to the console. So once again I hit the power switch. Battery switches are automatically going to turn on. You have courtesy lights, compartment lights, underwater lights, bilge pumps, raw water pump, mercerator pump, uh, navigation lights, live wheel lights, starboard live wheel. 
uh, accessory switch or port live well if it's equipped and then multiple accessory switches and then of course the horn. It does have lighted cup holders here. The bow ones are not lit. lit. Mercury binnacle control here. Coming down. Storage compartment here. Uh, right here you have your JL audio head unit. And then you also have your RGB light control here. And then this is the emergency parallel switch that I was talking about for if you wanted to manually activate that. You also have a storage cubby hole here with USB on one side and then standard 12 volt plugs on the other side. So you have plenty of charging ports. Talking about the upgraded leaning post. So you have your armrest. You have your bolsters that flip down. You also have a little bit of storage underneath each one of the seats. The other one does exactly the same thing. Leaning post, foot rail for when you get up and you can sit. And then you also have somewhere to put your feet up here. It does have a compass, plenty of sea deck area up front with the lip so that nothing slides out. Uh, very small windshield uh, don't need anything larger than that like I mentioned a minute ago it is a very uh, very dry sturdy ride electronics box up top it's pre-wired for whatever accessories that you'd like to put up there and at the console you can see that you can fit uh, one very large graph or two smaller graphs a couple of things about the leaning post you can see it's actually got finger places for your fingers so you get a better grip on it. It is powder coated. Does have the life jacket bag up top. Come back to the speakers. The dome lights that I was speaking of are right up there. Coming back, you have plenty of rod holders on the T-top. Let's see here. Talking about the back of the leaning post more rod holders as well as more lit cup holders storage back of it yeti 65 cooler with a slide pull the pin at the bottom right there and it will slide back so you've got easy access self belling cockpit talking about the live well system friction hinges on the lids once again made very very similar to a standard bait tank it does have rounded edges is not squared off so the water can circulate as it's supposed to live well lights coming to the other side another live well there talking about the rear seat so it does fold up like so so that you've got even more seating down and as a old school rigger seat comes up storage compartment there and then this I'm gonna set the camera down for just one second remove this panel As you can see, you get down inside, you can see how neat, you can see how clean everything is. You can see the macerator pump, macerator pump there, part of your fuel system, hydraulic jack plates. Everything's very clean, very neat. It's one thing Camus was very well known for. Right back there is your power steering assist pump. So that is the Camus 26 HB. Great ride, very good storage, and a wonderful family boat at that. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.